We continue with the viral infections uh, that infect uh, uh, humans' nervous system. And the first viral infection of nervous system is uh, rabies. Uh, it's caused by rabies virus. And uh, rabies is known as a zoonosis uh, type of infection. Uh, it means uh, the uh, source of infection will be animals. Um, for example, uh, bats, raccoons, foxes, uh, coyotes. Uh, also, a uh, source of infection will be infected uh, humans and uh, domestic infected domestic animals. Uh, infection is transmitted through uh, infected saliva through the bite. And uh, uh, please remember that incubation uh, period of rabies can vary. The um, average incubation period for rabies is about two months, but also can be as short as uh, nine days and uh, as long as several years. Actually, the uh, length of incubation uh, period uh, depends on two factors. The first factor, it's the uh, amount of viruses or number of the viruses that are introduced into the lesion with the bite. The more viruses uh, in saliva, they're in saliva, uh, the shorter is going to be incubation period. The second factor that affects length of incubation period is uh, the lesion, the location of the lesion. Uh, the closer bite or lesion from the brain of the patient, the shorter is going to be incubation period. Uh, there are four phases uh, in uh, rabies. And the first uh, phase is called prodromal phase. Uh, and uh, usually uh, during prodromal phase, patients have uh, burning and tingling sen sensations around the bite, around the lesion. The second lesion is called excitation phase, and uh, it means uh, patients start developing neurological symptoms. It means nervous system of a patient is already affected. Um, that they uh, will develop impairment, uh, impairment of speech, vision, uh, they will lose muscle control, develop anxiety and apprehension. The next uh, phase is called hydrophobia phase. Hydrophobia means fear of water. If you give a glass of water to those patients, they won't be able to drink it. They will choke on it. And the last phase is called, called uh, paralytic phase. Uh, this is when muscles uh, become weaker, uh, patients lose their consciousness and uh, die. As you see, mortality rate for this uh, infection is 100%. It's a deadly infection. How do we diagnose uh, rabies? Uh, for a long time, we were looking for negri bodies in the brain of infected animals. Today, since we uh, have immunological or serodiagnostic tests available, everything becomes much easier. And today, to diagnose rabies, we just look for presence of antibodies uh, to rabies in the patient's system. Treatment. Uh, the first treatment uh, for, for rabies was developed uh, by Louis Pasteur, and that was um, uh, 14 from 14 to 21 injections into abdominal wall. Uh, the treatment was pretty uh, painful, uh, also caused a lot of side effects, allergic reactions, uh, but uh, remember that the mortality rate of, uh, of rabies is about 100%. Uh, so that was a very good actual discovery uh, made by Louis Pasteur. Uh, today, uh, to treat rabies, uh, we use vaccine, and actually it is uh, uh, immunoglobulin, uh, RAG, rabies immunoglobulin, and we administer uh, this vaccine as uh, six injections, and usually we introduce it into the muscle tissue uh, in different areas of uh, uh, patient body. Uh, the next viral infection is poliomyelitis. Uh, poliomyelitis is caused by polio virus. Remember, it is a very stable, very resistant virus. It belongs to a uh, picorna virus family. Uh, the source of infection will be infected individual. Uh, 
Infection is uh, transmitted by respiratory droplets. Um, uh, because uh, there are no cases of poliomyelitis here in the United States, we don't have to know uh, full stages of poliomyelitis, but we have to know vaccines that we use today to vaccinate a uh, population. Uh, there are two uh, types of polio vaccines uh, today on the market. Uh, the first vaccine is an oral vaccine, uh, or we call it Sabin vaccine, and it is an attenuated type of vaccine. It means we use uh, a live virus to make this uh, type of vaccine. Advantage of uh, this vaccine, it actually creates a pretty strong and uh, long-lasting immunity because we use a live pathogen to make this vaccine. Uh, but there's a disadvantage. Um, I already told you if a patient uh, is immunocompromised or a person who takes care about a vaccinated child is immunocompromised, uh, then there is a chance that uh, those people can get infected uh, with even weakened virus and develop symptoms of uh, polio. Uh, the second type of vaccine that we use today is injected vaccine, or it's called Solk vaccine, which is a, an example of inactivated vaccine. It means we use um, dead poliovirus to make Solk vaccine. Uh, advantage, uh, there are no side effects. There are no side effects. Disadvantage, unfortunately, uh, it forms weak and uh, not long-lasting immunity. And even with the booster shots, immunity not as strong as uh, immunity that produced by attenuated polio vaccine. We continue our lecture with encephalitis. Uh, encephalitis is uh, inflammation of the uh, brain and um, the most common types of encephalitis are listed here on this slide. Um, the most common cause of encephalitis here in the United States is arboviruses. arboviruses. The source of infection is uh, animals, for example, horses or birds. Uh, the infection is transmitted by um, mosquitoes, uh, sometimes by ticks, and uh, usually uh, it explains why we have usually outbreaks uh, in the summer, in the spring. Uh, we usually have outbreaks of encephalitis when uh, mosquitoes are uh, active. Uh, I've already told you that encephalitis is very difficult to diagnose uh, because there are no specific symptoms for encephalitis and symptoms uh, that patients actually might develop uh, depend on the what part of brain uh, will be affected by infection. But what are the common symptoms of encephalitis? Uh, those are going to be uh, severe headaches, uh, fever, lethargy, irritability, confusion, sudden personality changes, sensitivity to the sunlight. Uh, please uh, remember a stiff neck is not very specific symptom for encephalitis. It's more specific as I said for meningitis. Uh, sometimes encephalitis can develop rapidly and those patients uh, might develop uh, uh, paralysis and uh, coma. So how do we diagnose encephalitis? A diagnosis is actually based on everything, case history, physical exam, and only occasionally we can uh, detect antibodies against uh, uh, arbovirus in the patient's uh, system. Since uh, this is a viral infection, uh, there's no specific treatment. Basically for those patients, we only can um, offer supportive or symptomatic treatment. Next, uh, we're going to talk about a uh, West Nile virus uh, because uh, it can cause a West Nile fever. Uh, the first time uh, we had uh, an outbreak of a West Nile fever in 1999 in New York City. Uh, today, um, this infection uh, can be found anywhere. Uh, and the source of infection will be uh, birds, especially crows. Uh, 
if during the summer scientists see that uh, there are a lot of dead crows on the fields they usually pick them up and check them for presence of West Nile virus in their system if uh, this virus is uh, found in those uh, in, in those birds that means um, we are going to have a lot of outbreaks of West Nile fever among population. How is it transmitted? Um, infection is transmitted by uh, mosquitoes, by mosquitoes, and the main symptoms of uh, West Nile fever are uh, fever, headaches, body aches, skin rash, especially on the chest, the stomach, and the back areas. Uh, swollen lymph glands. Uh, some patients uh, can develop symptoms of encephalitis. And once again, because it's a, a viral infection, uh, there is no specific treatment. Uh, treatment will be asymptomatic. We continue with uh, infections uh, that uh, are caused by prions or prions. Uh, I already told you on one of our previous lectures that prions are infectious proteins. Uh, they're not viruses uh, because they have no structure of the viruses. Uh, those, as I said, are pieces of infectious proteins and uh, even though they have uh, such a, a simple uh, structure, they can cause um, very serious problems in humans. Uh, they can cause what we call spongiform encephalopathy. Spongiform encephalopathy, uh, it's a deadly form of encephalitis and we call it spongiform encephalitic encephalopathy uh, because the brain of those patients uh, uh, becomes so much damaged it looks like a sponge. So let's talk about other infections that can be caused by um, prions. The first one is called crutchfield jacob disease and patients uh, might develop uh, uh, symptoms of this infection when they get infected through the uh, transplants, uh, surgical instruments, contaminated surgical instruments, uh, through the injections of the growth hormones. Next infection is called kuru. kuru. Uh, in this case, uh, infection can be found in uh, Africa. Uh, it usually affects tribes uh, in Africa and the reason why those tribes, uh, people or members of those tribes develop symptoms of uh, uh, this uh, form of cephalitis because uh, until today uh, in some tribes in Africa there is a, a tradition they eat brain of uh, a dead a member of the tribe. Uh, they do it because they believe that they might uh, become as brave as that uh, member uh, or as smart as, as that person. Uh, but of course if the brain of that person is uh, infected by prions, uh, those uh, uh, people also get infected and develop symptoms of uh, spongiform encephalopathy. Next infection is scrapie. Uh, scrapie uh, affects uh, animals, sheep and goats. And um, as a result of this infection, animals develop intense itch. And uh, the itch is so intense, they uh, scrap off their fleas. And finally, the last uh, infections that, infection that is caused by prions is mad cow disease or bovine spongiform encephalitis. We had an outbreak of this infection in Great Britain in the uh, 1980s uh, when a lot of people uh, got infected and developed uh, symptoms of spongiform, spongiform encephalopathy. And uh, today scientists believe that uh, those people uh, got infected from the uh, contaminated beef because in Great Britain uh, they used to use processed sheep uh, meat uh, to feed cattle. So after that had uh, they had that this outbreak of this infection, they stopped doing it. On this slide, you see uh, pictures of the uh, healthy brain on the left side of the brain, and the right side of the brain, you see a slide of a damaged uh, brain uh, damaged by um, spongiform encephalopathy, and you see uh, this uh, tissue has holes in it. And um, we continue with protozoal infections. Protozoal infections, and we uh, start uh, with African trypanosomiasis. 
or uh, another name of this infection is African sleeping sickness. African trypanosomiasis is an example of severe form of encephalitis caused by trypanosoma brucei, which is protozoal. The source of infection will be animals. Cattle, for example, sheep. Infection is transmitted by tsetse fly. Incubation period of this infection is about uh, 7 to 28 days. And when tsetse fly uh, bites person, it injects a uh, pathogen into the skin. Then after that, um, the pathogen enters uh, blood of the patient and uh, infection becomes systemic. It spreads in the spleen, lymph nodes, liver. Patients develop uh, symptoms of uh, headache, malaise, uh, uh, high fever. But uh, you have to remember that on this stage, uh, this infection is still curable. But after this stage, then pathogen spreads into central nervous system. As soon as uh, uh, the pathogen spreads into cent central nervous system, uh, the first sign of it will be changed personality of infected person. Then uh, later on, they lose ability to speak, to walk, uh, become tired and sleepy all the time, and eventually they get in uh, into the coma and uh, die. On this stage, uh, infection becomes deadly and there is no cure for uh, this infection on this stage. How do we diagnose um, African uh, sleeping sickness? Uh, it's very easy to diagnose because the parasite, the pathogen, is pretty large and can be seen in the blood. Treatment. I told you uh, it's possible to cure African trypanosomiasis uh, or African sleeping sickness before uh, prozole reaches a central nervous system. After it reaches central nervous system, there is no cure for this infection. It becomes uh, deadly. Uh, there is no uh, vaccine available against this infection because uh, for some reason uh, people are not able to develop long-term immunity against uh, Japanosoma brucei. On this slide, you see on the left side a picture of Trypanosoma brucei. This is how it looks like in the bloodstream. And on the right side, it's a picture of the tsetse fly that transmits uh, African sleeping sickness.